I'm here with uh, Jason Rogers. We're in the Museum of American Fencing. And Jason has come down from New York to Shreveport. And we're standing in front of his display that he donated with his uh, uniform from the 04 Games in Athens, his warm up suit. Of course, we have a cute picture of him when he was 13 at Westside Fencing Center where we met in Los Angeles many years ago. And uh, as you know, Jason started with Daniel Colston and uh, had great fortune to be extremely talented and a great coach. And then at the age of, uh, he won the national championships for under 14 in 97. He also won Division II nationals at that same age of just turning 14. And then he earned his A at the 97 NAC in Rochester, uh, knocking off a Canadian Olympian to make it into the final of eight when he was quite young. And uh, now he's been in the Olympics twice, earning a silver medal in the 08 Games. So first thing I want to ask you is, uh, so how much impact has fencing had or what impact has fencing had on you if you were to look back at the whole thing? An immense impact. I mean, I think I learned most of my life lessons through fencing because when you're at a young age, you know, you, you need a small kind of microcosm to, to live within to, to be able to learn lessons yeah. and be able to test them. So sport always exists as a perfect testing ground for somebody. So fencing, I mean, being the sport that it is, being a sport of intellect, being a sport of dynamic athleticism, I mean, it formed really who I, who I am and who I, who I was. So, I mean, I, I can't even put that into words. I couldn't quantify that for you. How has your handling of pressure in general uh, morphed its way through in your use of fencing and, and just, as your sport? Well, I think at the very beginning I was unaware of pressure. When you're young, when you're 13, 14, 15 years old, you're not even thinking about that. But as you get older and you start to become more aware of the things that are in play, uh, it starts to, to weigh down on you, but then you learn how to deal with it. So when I was 18 or 19 and I was ranked number one in the world as a junior, I think that was the first moment where I ever kind of looked up and said, oh my God, all of this kind of matters. And I started to struggle with my performance. But then I became a psych major at Ohio State and that helped me to find the tools to be able to deal with some of that anxiety that you get when you when you're in a very pressure situation. So I became a very conscientious learner of ways and schools and, and or ways and skills to be able to deal with that. And that's what kind of helped propel me to be able to make those couple of Olympic teams. Interesting. As I told you the other day, you're one of only three men in history to make the uh, U.S. Olympic team in Sabre from California. As New York mainly dominated the Sabre scene for many, many years. And the first was Ralph Faulkner. Mm -hmm who made it uh, from California in the 28 and 32 Olympics. Then the next man was Ed Carfagno, the Academy Award winning uh, art director in 1940, even though the Olympics were canceled. And then you made it uh, 60 years later. Yeah, I feel honored to be in, among that company. Isn't it amazing? It is. Tell me the influence that Daniel Coston and uh, Vladimir uh, Neslimov had on your life. I mean, again, so hard to quantify for you, but Daniel, being my coach from 11 years, you know, 11 years old on to, to 26 when I made my second Olympic team, um, with Vladimir in between, I mean, I couldn't ask for two better mentors. Daniel acted as kind of a second father figure to me because, you know, you spend so much time in the gym. I spent hundreds of thousands of hours with Daniel Costin. And, you know, that was one of the reasons why I initially stayed with the sport of fencing because his upbeat, you know, jubilant, like complete fun-loving attitude just kept me interested. It wasn't all about work and technique, and it was about fun and enjoying. So right. he taught me that from very early on. And then when I went to college, I started working with Vladimir Nazimov, you know, the famous Vladimir Nazimov. And you know, I learned a little bit more discipline. You know, becoming very, very focused on you know, every day, making sure I get the right amount of technical practice in this amount of footwork, this amount of blade work, this number of bouts, and it became much more systematic for me. And then at a little that became a little bit onerous, and so I, I decided to start working with Daniel again, and he kind of brought me back to the other side of the spectrum. So it's been this kind of dance that I've played between those two things, fun and work. So, infinitely influenced me. So now you've gotten into acting and modeling, and I've got here uh, <laughs> one of Jason's most recent jobs, in the uh, it's in Wall, Street Journal. Wall Street Journal from uh, March of this year, and you can see Jason in his uh, scenes here 
And that has brought you to Shreveport. It has indeed. To uh, work on uh, your photography and your next modeling job, your next acting job. So what's the future hold for you? Well, right now I think I'm, I'm really focused on the fashion world, just because that's where I am, I am best positioned to hopefully achieve some success. I'm with a great modeling agency in New York City called Wilhelmina Models. I mean, it's one of the best agencies in the world for men. And uh, what's great is that fencing is a sport that is so well received among the fashion community because it has this air of antiquity and history. And they love the, the look of, of the fencing outfits that people used to wear in the early 1900s. So I've been able to kind of bridge that gap and be sort of an emissary of sorts for fencing to bring it into a new realm. Uh, acting right now is just fun. I'm just taking classes in New York City. I have no, I have no uh, professional aspirations at this point in time, but I'm just letting it evolve and I'm just enjoying learning as I do it. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much oh, for your time. It's my pleasure. Thank you for your time. I wish time. you a great time when you head back to New York. Thank you, Andy. Okay.